Welcome to the shooting show brought to you this week from the very windy Russell Glacier in Greenland. We're hunting muskox with Thomas Olsen. We head to a remote hunting ground a plane journey away from the glacier. Thomas Olsen oversees this ground and has drafted in sporting rifle writer Thomas Nissen as hunting guide. Thomas knows this area well and straight away he stalks into a promising piece of ground with Johannes. Thomas's experience soon pays dividends as they spot a male muskox ahead but the distance is too great and the pair still have some stalking ahead of them. We make gains surprisingly quickly. The cover is low, meaning we can cross the ground with ease, but it also increases the chance of being spotted, so we soon switch to a crouch to reduce the size of our unavoidable silhouettes. There's a body there. We must go closer. Okay, okay. As Thomas dispenses the final instructions before the shot, Johannes shoulders a Merkel helix and waits for the beast to turn broadside. Good shot. Yeah, it went down. Yes. Johannes executes a swift reload, but it's not needed. The muskox is down on the spot. After the customary wait, we head in to inspect the carcass. Next, it'll be my turn behind the rifle. Okay, Johannes, this is your first green antique muskox. Yeah. Weidmann's Heil. Weidmann's Dank, Thomas. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great hunt. That was a pleasure. We got here a middle-aged bull with a nice boss, long horns and a black tip that I like very much. The black tip that will disappear when they grow older. Yeah. The horns will go back, but on this trophy we have this very nice uh, black tip. Wonderful. To be out out here in this wonderful landscape and, and have such an experience. Just coming over the hill and you stopped me and said, Hey, there is a mask ox. Hey, you have to check him out. Marvelous. It was great. And you have to take the chance, I think. Yeah. Oh? And, and after we saw him, this was a good chance. Yeah. After we saw him, he actually came, approached us. Yeah. He came yeah. closer, closer. He didn't know we were there. Yeah and we could take the shot when it's, you turn the side. It's not so easy in this area no. with the vegetation to no. actually, get it really. Actually, even that it's a big animal and it's low vegetation, yeah. it's uh, very difficult to see in yeah. this area. Great. And Marvelous. it was a difficult shot also. After you shot this one, then number two, he was coming over the hill in the direction right towards us. <laughs> incredible, incredible. I, I thought I was dreaming and I think that was the cameraman's one and finally he did it <laughs> with a good shot. But safety is safety. Just give him two more and then yeah. we had a second mask box in yeah. not such a long time. No. Great experience, <laughs> marvelous. We've got two muskox to our names in a short space of time. Johannes follows tradition by paying tribute to the fallen game. That's my first muskox bull. Uh, fantastic experience. Filmed Johannes there. Uh, perfect stalking there. Nice bull. Bam. Down he went. Perfect shot. Uh, another bull came in, which was fantastic. And uh, it's my turn to shoot. So I uh, switched camera for rifle. Uh, took the shot. It was a good shot. First shot. He ran on. And uh, there's a big gorge down the bottom. We didn't want him to go in there. So I, I 
put another shot into him and uh, big tough animals kept going so I had to run and uh, put a third shot just to make sure uh, he went down and uh, what a magnificent animal but we're not done yet Thomas takes Gary Sharp out after a muskox of his own. We've had two successful stalks so far and we're determined to make it a hat trick. We spy a suitable but sleepy bull some distance away. Its eyes are shut but there's no room for complacency, so we stalk in carefully in a crouched position. After a painstaking approach, Thomas identifies a rock that can be used as a rest at a suitable shooting range. At first there's no sign of movement from our quarry, but after a short while the weight pays off. Now there's only a well placed shot between Gary and his prize. The fast cycling of the helix was called into action, but after an effective insurance shot, this one's down for good. It's been top class guiding from Thomas yet again, and the conclusion above the Arctic Circle to a memorable hunting excursion in Greenland. Well, congratulations, Gary. Thank you. Nice animal. Went out hunting south of the camp, and uh, after walking about two and a half, three kilometers, we spotted the two first muskox, two old bulls in a deep valley where it was uh, quite difficult to approach them in this, this valley. It was very open. Yeah. And we're about 300 metres away. So we had to make a plan how to stalk in. So we stalked very carefully towards the muskox, got within about 120 metres, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And got on a rock. Yeah. We were ready to shoot. Yeah. And uh, he was sleeping. It was actually very hot at this time. So uh, his eyes was closed, but we just waited until he stood up, Gary took a shot, actually a perfect shot, but I asked him to follow up, the muskox is a strong animal, so he followed up with a second shot, only two seconds later, a shot that took him down in the, in the, when the bullet hit him. That was very nice. Mm. Yeah, fantastic hunt, beautiful place, beautiful scenery, such an impressive area, to be so remote and experience all them things, very nice. Then on the final day, we took a German Jost Arnold for his hunt. He killed a muskox on a very good hunt. You can read about this hunt in Sporting Rifles soon. Thomas Elton there, making it happen in Greenland. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Environment Secretary Owen Patterson has been sacked and Liz Truss is his replacement. Ms Truss is thought of as an up-and-comer in government and she joins Cabinet as a result of the latest reshuffle. Owen Patterson was a supporter of the Badger Cull and the Countryside Alliance said he had worked extremely hard to support rural interests. But it expressed concerns that no matter who is Environment Secretary, fundamental issues within the department make this an almost impossible role. Shooting might be worth £2 billion a year, but the contribution of rural activities is still undervalued, says the Prince's Countryside Fund. Research conducted for the fund by YouGov reveals that 28% of people tend to underestimate the countryside's contribution to the overall economy. Fund manager Helen Aldis said rural affairs are often put to one side until there's a crisis, and most of the time we neglect to examine the issues the countryside faces. More news like this in Modern Gamekeeping magazine. Shooters are flocking to respond to a countryfile poll that's telling the BBC the value of shooting. After shooting was featured on the programme two weeks ago, Countryfile launched a vote online asking if the shooting industry does more good than harm to Britain's wildlife. With more than 40,000 votes cast so far, 84% of respondents are in favour of shooting. To cast your vote, follow the link on screen now. Clay shooters have raised £5,000 to support English Commonwealth athletes. Five shooters who don't get any funding from governing bodies will receive £1,000 each thanks to the Clay Shooting Community Crowdfunding Scheme, which saw more than 100 individuals donate to the cause. Caroline Povey, Matt French, David Sipling, Rachel Parrish and Sarah Gray will put the money towards practice, equipment and travel to the events. Read all about the crowdfunding project in Clay Shooting magazine. 
And finally, Richard Jeans has won Target Rifle's most prestigious accolade, the Queen's Prize. Jeans shot a total of 297, and his impressive V-count of 44 saw him squeeze ahead of Rob Sandlett and Simon Carson to be chaired off the range. It's ten years after his brother Henry won the prize, and other brother Ed came second last year. Having won the world long-range title in Australia three years ago, Richard Jeans must now be considered among Target Rifle's modern greats. That was the Shooting Show News. And now, in a Shooting Show News special, we report almost live from Blenheim Palace. It's the CLA Game Fair 2014. Returning to Blenheim for the first time in three years, the fair saw the greats of the gun trade assemble to show off their wares. The fair also plays a crucial part in the countryside calendar as an annual meeting place for sportsmen of all descriptions. Robert Sears gave us the insider's perspective on the role the game fair plays today and what the future holds for the event. One of the big things about this year is you, you walk around and I've heard from so many people that the atmosphere, the atmosphere uh, around the show seems absolutely tremendous and it's good to hear that from people. We're lucky now that with a bit of experience, you know, myself and Tony who are a little bit older and with a very young team, uh, we work very well together so with the experience and maturity and, and a new team coming along. So yes, I, I think uh, with all of that everything is pretty uh, stable and we're going to have a consistent team. To come to somewhere uh, like Blenheim and, and Harewood next year, to, to have the mix of, if you like, everyone from, from the Duke of Marlborough uh, to the gamekeeper uh, going round a, a show uh, is absolutely fantastic it, and therefore it's a show for everybody. It's very important when we're running an event like the CLA Game Fair that we make it available to, to everybody, you know, both in the south of the country and in the north of the country. And I know my friends in Yorkshire who I've been speaking to uh, are thoroughly looking forward to, to us uh, going back to Harewood. Then we headed on to Gunmakers Row to sniff out the hottest new products on offer. Our first stop was an Armsan semi-auto from Highland Outdoors. This is the new Armsan 612 Red Action Sporter, um, designed for play shooting, uh, it's got the high rib and it handles very nicely. The synthetic, yeah, aluminium action. What we find with these is they, at the price point, they uh, are kind of unbeatable. Um, we've got extended chokes, which is handy for quick changes between stands. And uh, yeah, very reliable. These are made in Turkey, um, very reliable, and they cycle 28 gram cartridges straight out of the box, which is a good selling point at, uh, you know, on a semi auto at this level. Edgar Brothers also had something new on the shotgun front. Becky McKenzie was on hand to explain all, as clay shooting magazine's Hugh Hopkins looked on with interest. Today I'm here with Edgar Brothers in the Zolly studio with the new Zolly HR, which is a high rib. This here is a Z Extra Sporter high rib. It's an adjustable high rib, 70-30. Multi choke. It's got an adjustable rib. It's got an adjustable stock. It's also got the between hands balancing system. The bore is chrome lined and the barrels are silver soldered. It's been three years in production making this gun for Zolly and we're very proud to have this gun. It is a tremendous gun to shoot. The fair saw the Hainel Jaeger 10 rifle unleashed on the public. On sale at the Swillington shooting supply stand alongside Merkel, the rifle was present in many different finishes and the exhibitor reported an exceptionally high level of interest. Onward to Swarovski, known to most as a maker of top quality optics. But its latest innovation is on a far smaller scale, a smartphone accessory. We're at the uh, CLA Game Fair 2014, sun shining, really warm, having a great day. Um, we have a, a, a good selection of our products here today, um, rifle scopes, telescopes and binoculars. But one thing that has caught the eye is our new iPhone attachment. So, this particular attachment will hold the iPhone 5S and it will just slide in to the frame and you can then just connect that to the telescope and take video or still images through the iPhone 5S. We also have different ring sizes for the binoculars as well. So it's a great way of capturing um, wildlife or when you're out and about shooting. One of the biggest new launches at Blenheim came courtesy of Beretta and its UK importer GMK. Well this is the new 690 grade 3 from Beretta, 
It's the first hunting gun with the new action, which was introduced last year on the 692 competition gun. So we have a wider action. As you can see, the receiver's been modified slightly, very elegant. The engraving is a combination of roll and laser cut. Uh, so we have a fantastic design on the bottom, which is scroll engraving. And then a game scene on each side, partridges and a pheasant. Double fences, which are very elegant, normally associated with guns at a much higher price point. We have a new shaped barrel with a uh, redesigned shoulder and we have Octachoke barrels which are HP which means they're steel shot friendly they have an Optima HP chokes and we have the new style forend the forend incorporates a spring inside which is self adjusting so the gun has a smooth opening and closing system it's also an alloy, uh, alloy iron so the forend is very light which has moved the uh, balance of the gun into the middle. So we have a very well balanced gun, perfect for hunting. Seven and a half pounds in 28 inch. It's got a uh, single selective trigger. It's got the new style ejector system, which is uh, very rigid to get good clean ejection on a variety of cartridges. It has a non ejecting -eject facility, so you can convert it from uh, ejection to manual extraction for uh, hunting in a blind or uh, when you're out in the field. And Browning was the final company to wow us with an exceptionally good value shotgun. We have a Miracu MK60 high pheasant gun, uh, specifically designed for the high pheasant uh, in the fact that it's um, a traditional Miracu which is intrinsically a very very strong gun anyway but uh, in this particular model we have a 32 inch fixed choke barrel so it's very well balanced but we have it bored full and three quarter uh, so it's very tightly choked designed for obviously uh, shooting birds at, at extreme distances in the in the sky um, you will notice the uh, very fine hand finished engraving scroll engraving and a beautiful grade 5 walnut woodwork uh, attached to the gun. Such a high quality product looking very very nicely as well at such a good price. £2,600 recommended price for this gun uh, and when you think that we could make this into a pair for you numbered one and two in a double leather case for £5,200 that represents tremendous value for money for uh, a very keen game shot that would be doing uh, a number of days in the field with high pheasants. That's all from Gunmakers Row. We'll see you at Harewood House next year. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show.